Welcome, happy holidays, merry Logmas, fellow fans of Clash of Clans, it's your host, Galadon. I hope you guys had a fantastic Christmas. Thank you guys for stopping by. It is No Cash Clash, the beloved series that has been thriving through 159 episodes as of today. And finally, at this moment, in today's episode, I fulfill a request that I have seen in the comments for literally months. All right, you guys have been asking for it. Viewers have been telling me that it is the best way to farm and everybody seems to love the Sneaky Goblin. So let's get in there and finally spend 25,000 Dark Elixir. You'll notice because we didn't have anything else to spend it on, I figured this was a good time to experiment. We've got three days to use the Sneaky Goblin and farm what we can farm. So let's go ahead and put together now i'll give you this right now i don't do goblin knife i don't have any experience with sneaky goblins so i thought hey let's just go ahead and use a log launcher throw in a couple of ice golems a whole bunch of sneaky goblins some rage and some freeze now go ahead drop down to the comments and freak out about how i'm using the wrong sneaky goblin army but let, okay let's just get into the raids and show you what i'm doing here so yes Part of it is just kind of having fun dropping in the log launcher because it's not necessarily the best siege machine right now, but it's definitely the most fun. And if you aim it at the dark elixir storage, you can usually take that out just with the logs that are coming out. So this first raid, and this by the way, was my very first sneaky goblin raid ever, kind of ends up being a little bit of a goblin knife. Now you'll notice I did drop a few around the outside to pick up the collectors, the mines, the drills that were around the edges of the base. And then we pour most everybody in the core and just kind of watch them go. Throw a rage spell just right in the middle. And yeah, this was kind of uh, sloppy, I'll admit, but it was kind of cool also to watch the sneaky goblins run in, invised all the way towards the town hall and around the outside. And yes, they are extremely efficient at grabbing loot. Yes, you can do a lot of damage with them, to these storages and you can get in there even in a pretty tough base but and this is where i'm kind of not completely converted to believing that this is the best army to use it just doesn't give me the same feeling of satisfaction that i get from spamming baby dragons and i will tell you this that given the two armies similarities and differences i think that you're going to do better with sneaky goblins if you're running a ton of raids, if you're raiding a lot throughout the day, and I'm talking about more than say six, eight times a day, and I don't know how many people do that. I think that maybe Sneaky Goblins makes sense because you'll make back the 25K that you spent in Dark Elixir to purchase them in the first place, right? If you're raiding any less than that, then it probably makes sense to go with the baby dragons. And I'll be honest with you, Baby dragons with the log launcher pointed at the dark elixir storage pretty much is going to take just about the same amount of dark that you could get with the sneaky goblins. And overall, it's cheaper. And you really ideally are preserving dark elixir at almost any town hall, especially 9, 10, 11. You're trying to get through those hero levels. Maybe once you've maxed out the heroes for your specific town hall and you only have say dark elixir troops and spells to work on then you start focusing more on the sneaky goblins they are fun it is a cool way to change things up and i definitely think that if you've never tried them you should give them a try they are extremely efficient they will blast through those walls under rage and go just about anywhere you need them to go Obviously, again, I'm not doing a lot of dropping them around the other side of the base to get to the storages. You could be less spammy with them, a little more focused with where you drop them if you want to get to specific storages. And also, notice the ice golems. They're kind of providing this after-the-fact freeze that isn't being the most efficient. So I'm actually going to have to say that ice golems are not the best siege machine unit to put in there, but it's still fun to watch, right? So we brought a ton of free spells this time. I think this was accidentally seven free spells, which is probably never a good idea. And then again, we also are dropping the log launcher so that it heads over the dark elixir storage. We've got the heroes to try to tank for those defenses that might target the log launcher. And yes, I did learn live in a stream the other night that the log launcher crushes heroes, which is pretty horrific. But, you know, when you compare it to what happens in, say, Clash Royale, with a log destroying princesses, 
then I can kind of understand and see a log launcher running over an Archer Queen, but it's one of the most graphic things that you can experience in Clash of Clans. Just saying, you know, there's a reason that you have to be at least 13 to play this game, and now we know why. Let's just cross our collective fingers and hope I don't get demonetized by YouTube for the violence in this video. All right, so Town Hall goes down, which again, that is something that we need to think about. Town Halls, getting the trophies, getting those wins, two-star wins with Sneaky Goblins, seems to be perhaps easier than with Baby Dragons. So, I will give you this. If you're focused on trophies, Sneaky Goblin Raids or Sneaky Goblin Knife Raids, whatever you want to call it, they're going to be very effective at grabbing two stars against a variety of bases. But I will tell you this, calculating the number of attacks I did and the amount of Dark Elixir I got, I did not profit by using Sneaky Goblins versus Baby Dragons. In fact, I ended up losing Dark Elixir because I wasn't raiding frequently enough. Even with an average of, say, 5,000 Dark Elixir per raid, that means you have to do five raids in three days more than otherwise than if you did the Baby Dragons because you didn't have five in three days. Three times five carry the four. One over the seven factorial squared. Yeah, so, no, well, Baby Dragons. All right, that's, that's all there is to say. Baby Dragons, they continue to be OP. They are amazing and they are fun. And they're easy. I mean, they're the easiest mindless raid. Because remember, if you start dropping the sneaky goblins on the outside trying to get to, say, storages from the same side, then you have to start worrying about jump spells. Are you going to use haste? Are you going to use freeze? And, you know, trying to mitigate the splash damage from the scatter shots if you're facing that high of a town hall or wizard towers or multi Fargate internos. Okay, so, hey, I wanted to reward myself for all of this hard work. And I know you guys, this is no cash clash. But here's the thing. We've got creator code Galadon active. We've got the epic winter scenery. Just this one time, I thought it would be amazing if we could really, you know, spruce up the no cash clash base and make it. Okay, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Those of you that are down in my comments, stop right now with the insults and the rage and go ahead, change your comment to I'm sorry, Galadon. Okay, have some faith. I've come this far as no cash clash. I'm not going to ruin it by buying the winter scenery. Or, or am I? I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing, right? The winter scenery, and it's not that expensive. So we went ahead and we purchased it. That's right, on Galadon 13.0, knock it off. Come on, I told you, free to play for life. And I'll even tell you this, even on Gold Pass Clash, we're not going to break down and do it because it includes loot. And that would kind of throw things off a little bit. So forget it, not going to happen. We are not purchasing sceneries unless they make them available for gems at some point in the future. And then, you know, maybe. All right, let's get back into a Town Hall 11 war raid using my personal favorite army. What, what, Galadon? Your favorite army isn't Baby Dragons? No, no, it's a great farming army, but by far, I think right now at Town Hall 11, your strongest possibility to grab those three-star war and CWL attacks is miners, okay? Miners or a hybrid. You could bring the hog riders maybe in the clan castle like I've done here, get a little bit of funneling going, and you're gonna win. Uh, it's just that simple. And it's a great way to learn how to use queen charges or queen walks or queen healer, whatever you call it in your country. Everybody calls it something different. But you can see that the fundamentals are going to stay the same. This is not that tough of a base. But we get in, we keep the queen alive, we try to create some sort of a funnel. Yes, I do not have my Grand Warden at all. Didn't really need him. Again, the Archer Queen's going to get one side of the funnel. Then the King and the Siege Barracks will get another. And then it's just a matter of where do you want to go next? Where are you going to drop in everybody else? Ideally, I would say try to get the Eagle down early. I did not do that here. As you can see, the Barb King and the Siege Barracks go on the other side. My Archer Queen, we're hoping she engages the defending Archer Queen. But again, one of the great things about Miners versus, say, Hog Riders is that Hogs are just going to get annihilated by an Archer Queen or a Clan Castle. The Miners, they, of course, will attack a hero that comes out to face them. And here you go. We've got, looks like, Bandits coming out of the defensive Clan Castle. They're not going to do that well against Miners either. Yes, we had to focus a bunch of spells right there. But eventually we'll get through and here come the Siege Barracks Hog Riders. The idea again here being that they will join the Miners 
and that heal spell will help everybody. Sure enough, right here on top of the eagle, it works out. A few hogs go around the merry-go-round there of the tornado trap, but we're going to annihilate this base. There was really never any question. Not that tough, and it is a lot of fun. In fact, this makes me really want to go back and start farming with miners again, just because it's just, it's different. And we have done 100,000 baby dragon attacks to the point now that when I make an episode of No Cash Clash or Gold Pass Clash, and I'm doing baby dragon attacks, I try not to show you guys that much, because there's really no point in watching these raids anymore. So, we threw in, obviously, sneaky goblins, but I will tell you this, I will let them expire after three days, and I will probably not go back to using them anytime soon. And we'll keep on with the miners in war attacks and the baby dragons for farming. Because remember, also with the baby dragons, you can deploy a partial army. You don't have to use all of them. Get in there and snipe. Once you've hit Champion League, hopefully before Town Hall 11, you've made it there for the very first time. You don't need to worry about trophies anymore. You can drop down to about Crystal, and then when you snipe that big Dark Elixir for just the Dark Elixir, it doesn't matter if you lose trophies. All right, we grab a War Triple, and we move on to the lab, and let's go, baby. That's right. It is time, since we're using Baby Dragons, to spend 11 days upgrading Lightning Spells. That is... Oof. All right, so 11 days of lightning spells, and here's the reason that I didn't use the hammer. I thought, you know what? Let's go ahead and check out other ways that we can accelerate this. And recent CWLs have left me with a glut of metals. 816 to be precise. So we are going to prepare for the future, and I would advise anybody that is participating in CWL to do the same, and that is buy the hammers and store them. Okay, just like you see right here. Now I've got all four hammers in my inventory. Gonna buy some research potions because I decided I only need to really keep about 240 just so I can buy two more hammers. Mostly I'm going to be hammering for fighting and building and spells, trying to speed the lab. And speaking of speeding the lab, gonna go ahead and one day off, two days off, three days off, four days off, five days off the upgrade time of the lightning spells, roughly, right? It's roughly five days. But we're not done. We are going to go back. We're going to go ahead and uh, let's see. We've got 311 medals left. So like I said, we're going to keep it so that I can at least have 240 medals. So that I could buy two more hammers. But I, of course, anticipate another season of CWL before Town Hall 12, right? Well, 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 we'll see about that. But here we go. A couple more days off. That was three more days reduced. So the lightning spells will be done in two or three days. That's going to feel good because then we will need one less lightning spell per air defense when we are raiding. That is going to make a huge difference. Remember Quattro Mortaris? This is going to be like Quattro Air Defensio one more time. And uh, yes, okay, we have the builders tied up. We had a couple of builder potions. Don't worry, I did not spend gems on those. I can't remember where we got those, but okay. So we've got the builder potions. We've got nobody free for almost a day. But wait a minute. Does it say... Wait, recommended upgrades? We've got this hammer. It's sitting right here. Maybe. Oh, man. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Should we do it? I mean, it says we should. All right, let's go on to the status report. Check out how things are going in the meantime. Trophies, like I said, we're going to cruise in Crystal. We are going to push in the Builder Base for the gem reward soon. So watch for that one. In the meantime, speaking of gems, we are up to almost enough to buy a book of heroes, that is the only thing we are probably going to buy from the trader because the heroes, they're a little bit stalled right now. Those upgrade times are so long, I figure it will be nice to have a book in there to max one of them out. Of course, the best food is sushi and the next goals are to get the Archer Queen to level 50. In the meantime, Galifam, thank you for making it all the way to the end of the episode. You know I love, think about it, appreciate every single one of you every single day. I hope you had an amazing holiday. It's a merry logma. So get out there, make the best of the rest of your day. Be kind to other people. I'll see you back here again tomorrow for more full attacks. Eminem who? Too fast. Isn't that what I heard Gallywife say? <laughs>